Hey, what's going on guys? Top Tier Gaming here, and today I'm coming at you with a Project Diva Hatsune Miku deck profile. So if you don't know much about this deck, um, it's a really strong compression based deck. And if your opponent's not playing something like Stock Swap or Anti-Compression, it is very, very hard for this deck to lose. Like, I honestly feel like this deck is super, super powerful. Um, and it can just be very crazy if you get compressed, and that's honestly the whole goal of the deck, is to compress yourself as much as possible. So I'm just going to get into the deck profile, and hopefully, um, if you don't know what the deck does, uh, it will become more clear as we go. And there is some interesting stuff in this list that some people don't play, and that's where I'll give most of the attention when explaining the cards. But uh, starting off with zeros, we're going to start with four of this Miku. She's a mill runner, so pretty standard good card that you want to run because mill runners can generate you advantage at level zero, so not much to explain there. And then next up is four of this Miku Ricky. So this is a search Ricky, and you know, you pay one, clock yourself, search your deck for a level one or lower music character. Um, just a very, very good effect to generate advantage early on, search for pieces you may need. And then on your opponent's turn, it actually gains uh, 1k power, making it 2-5, so overall a pretty good Ricky. Next up is four of this Miku Brainstormer, so this is the main source of like advantage generating in the deck. Uh, she's pay one tap herself, um, for each climax search a music character, and then when you play a climax you can select one character you control and it gains 500 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. So you know, 500 power boost, it means when you're playing climaxes you're getting extra value off of this card, um, making it very good to have one or two in the back, usually you're striving for two of this in the back. Um, and, you know, it lasts till the end of your opponent's turn, so you can actually sort of wall with certain cards, which is really cool. Um, it's just another use for the Brainstormer and a reason to keep it in the back row, which is why I think it's a really good Brainstormer. Next up is one of this Miku. She searches for Climaxes, which is super, super good for this deck because you actually gain so much um, stock advantage and just, like, momentum when you play a Climax card. Um, and that that will be more clear at level 1. But yeah, searching for Climax is really good. It helps you get your level 1 Climax combo, your level 3 Climax combo if you don't have it. Um, you clock yourself and discard a card to search a Climax from your deck. Um, just a very useful effect. I was playing two of this and three of the Brainstormer, but I really wanted to sort of get two Brainstormers in the back as early as possible because you have a lot of stock to play with in this deck. Um, and then I felt like if I already have so many Brainstormers, I can sort of get this uh, climax search when I needed it. I don't want to draw it when I don't want it. So I feel like one is a good number. Uh, two might have been too much. But uh, yeah, that was one of the changes we made here. And then two of this pay to search a music character Miku. Um, so this card is sort of like a generic effect, right? It's like the one of the oldest plus one type effects in Vice Wars. Pay to stock, either search or salvage. This is a search. And you might be wondering why I'm running this because it's not a bad card inherently, but it's not something you see in a lot of meta competitive decks. And that's because this deck is a very compression based deck. And one thing you'll notice is we are running gold bar. And there's, and like, along with triggering climaxes on your first attack, there's a lot of reasons in a deck that wants to play a, uh, a compression style to pay out stock when you need to. Um, you don't want to have like eight stock sitting on top of a climax you need to pay out. So to maximize how many climaxes, are in our waiting room on refresh. Um, we are going to be playing this mostly as a way to pay out stock. We have a few of those besides our Brainstormer, but it does come up sometimes. So I did want to have like an out uh, to pay out climaxes if I really need to. And it's usually fine because we do build a lot of stock, but it's more of just an out for more compression. And the plus one is very nice. It's a Ricky that's good all the way until level three because you don't want to clock yourself at that point. Um, but you still get the plus one, which is great. So three of this Streaming Heart Miku. So this card on play, you mill the top two cards of your deck. Uh, if you had a Climax, you gain 3k power, making her a pretty good beat stick at level zero. Um, mill two effects are very good in this deck. I mean, they're just good effects in Vice in general, but this deck is playing compression style and you're trying to get to your second refresh kind of quickly so you can utilize the compression you've made, start taking damage, start taking less damage sooner uh, and push your opponent for more damage. But also the way you gain compression in this deck uh, like revolves around sending music characters in your waiting room to stock. So this sort of sets up targets in your waiting room that you may want to send to stock for free compression. Um, so yeah, no two effects are just very good. And then she's also a clock suicider, which helps you get over like on reverse Rickies, um, just big beat sticks in general, 
uh, rickies that may activate when they go to waiting room, like waiting room Akatsuki's, things like this. This just gets around all of them, so clock suiciders are, it's a pretty good suicide effect, it's not like regular like suiciders that just reverse them. Clock suiciders are pretty good. So yeah, that's 18 level zeros on to level ones. Alright, so starting off level 1, here's probably one of the biggest differences of my build compared to a lot of builds you may find um, on YouTube or on Encore decks or wherever you may see this deck, is I'm actually not playing the uh, Sin Miku combo with the, with the bag. Um, I'm playing Time Machine Miku, so if you don't know what this is, it's a pretty old promo. Like, it's a promo from the first Miku set, I believe. Um, but I think this Climax combo is bonkers, like still today. Uh, like, this card has aged so well in my eyes. So, the Sin Miku combo is a pretty standard, like, Shimakaze combo, um, besides its sort of marker gimmick that I think is pretty cool, but not so good second deck. Um, and it's just like an on-reverse plus one. This card is also a plus one, but there's so much going for it. So, first of all, I'm not a big fan of bag trigger, especially in a deck that is dealing with compression. Blind stock is the worst when you're playing a compression-style deck because you don't want to be stuck on refresh with six climaxes when you expected eight. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't like bag trigger that much. 2k1, I don't think 2k1, which is the time machine combo, I don't think 2k1 is the greatest climax trigger, or on play it's like all right, you lose some damage off of it, but I do like it more than uh, bag. Um, but yeah, this is also a plus one climax combo, and it's uninteractive, and when I say that, I mean it doesn't matter you don't need to get reverses. It doesn't matter if you get reverse, so wall strategy does like nothing to this, which is great. Um, what she does is at Encore Step, if you have Time Machine uh, in your Climax Zone, you send her to memory. So if you have three of them, you just send all three to memory. At the start of your next draw phase, I'm pretty sure, uh, they all come back and they gain 3-5 power, making them 8-5 beat sticks. So this is uninteractive, it's a plus one, it denies your opponent's reverses, you then break wall strategies as an 8-5 beat stick everywhere. Um, it means like your level one game can be this Time Machine Miku all the way, and it's just a super, super good combo. Like, I, I feel like this is the best level one climax combo. That might be sort of a hot take, I, you know, I haven't tested with the Sin Miku or anything, um, but just like on paper for now, I think Time Machine Miku is the way I would want to go when I built this deck. Um, next up is three of this Miku. So on play, you can discard a card, select a music character in your clock, add it to hand, and then clock yourself. A little bit of hand filtering, uh, get certain pieces if an important piece is in your clock. Um, it means you have search, you have salvage, and you can search from your clock too. Lots of ways to get pieces you need. And then on attack, she gains 1,000 power for each other music character you control, making her 7-5 beat stick on offense. Um, she's super weak on defense, but she can usually reverse something when she's attacking, help get over walls a little more, and just be a pretty good uh, generic level 1 that can help build stock. Of course, just good to have beat sticks. Next up is two of this 1175 Miku with hand on core. Pretty standard 1 1 effect nowadays. Uh, it can pay out stock, which is cool, um, and it can just win its lane, sort of wall a little bit. So, just another option at level 1. And next up is four of the card that sort of makes this deck in my eyes. Like, if you're playing the blue version, there's another event that's really good. But this is the event that makes Miku to me. And that's this 1-1 one, one event, and its only on-play effect is send it to memory. Um, but once it's in memory, it gives a sort of recollection effect. Uh, every time you play a climax, you can select one music character in your stock, or in your waiting room, and put it into stock. So if you have two or three of these, of course they stack. So you can play a Climax and put three music characters from your waiting room into your stock. Of course, if you play just two Climaxes after this point, you've gained six stock for free. Technically three because it's a 1-1, one, one, so you've paid out uh, stock, but like I said, sometimes paying stock can be good, and this card becomes compression itself because it goes to memory. So you're still gaining the compression, but like you're only plussing the stock. It pays for itself, the first Climax you play. And past that point, it's just gaining you free stock. It's actually super crazy. If you're playing against a deck that cannot out like what your strategy is, you are almost guaranteed to win. This deck can be one of the most like toxic decks out there if you're not playing stock swap. It's so powerful and it's all because of this event. Alright, level 2, pretty short and sweet. We have two of this Miku. She's an anti-early play 
uh, anti-change, you know, she reverses uh, things that are higher level than your opponent. Pretty good generic level 2. Um, and then after that we have one of this Luka, who is also an anti-change. She's the only non-Miku card in the deck. Um, and she's just a 2-5 backup as well, so three anti-changes, pretty good amount. And lastly, one of this level support, uh, level assist, what, what, what do I normally call those? I've forgotten what I normally call them. Uh, but it also is like an upgrade to your Brainstormer in the sense that when you play a Climax, you have something um, 1k until the end of your opponent's turn, so it's just a nice little upgrade if you need the power. Um, yeah, it's just an upgrade to your Brainstormer if you need to like reverse things or wall more. Just a nice option to have, just as a one of. Alright, on to level 3s, we have 3 of this Miku. She is an early play if you have 6 or more Climaxes in Waiting Room, so if you set it up right, uh, you can drop this at level 2, which is really good. Um, if you have 3 or more music characters, she gains 1k, making her 11k base, pretty respectable. And on play, you can draw 2, discard 2, and put the top card of your deck into stock. Pretty good hand filter, technically a 3-1 early play. Overall I think this is a great early play that any set would want. Um, this one's just really good and we are running three of it for that reason. And lastly, four of the main game ender for Miku. Um, she's not only the main game ender, she's also the healer for this set, so this card is already crazy being a healer and a game ender. Always super powerful. Um, so what she does, so of course on play heal, and then at your Encore step, you can send a Climax in your Climax Zone to Waiting Room to play the gold bar from your hand onto stage. And this might seem kind of weird to do at Encore step until you read the next part of the card, which is pay one, discard one. When you place the hand in hand, the gold bar, in your Climax Zone during Encore step, you can pay the cost, which is the pay one, disc one. Um, and then you can burn for three. So that's a pretty efficient burn considering you can actually play like your 2k1 at the start, swing with all your level 3s, you gain technically a plus 1 when you play the Climax um, by drawing a card, and then you can pay 1, ditch 1. The pay 1 is nothing to this deck, to be honest. Uh, the discard 1 can be a struggle, but we're running so many Brainstormers, so many pluses. Um, I see when most Miku decks, when I watch them play, they seem to always build the stock, but like their deck doesn't support advantage gaining. Um, it's just like sometimes their build doesn't support it, so this one definitely does. Um, so you should be able to resolve three of this, and burn three is good because three is like sort of the best number, I think, to burn. Two or three, depending on how compressed your opponent is. But yeah, just a super, super solid game ender and uh, healer, and yeah, it's just one of the most powerful cards Miku has. And then for climaxes, we are playing the 2k1 time machine for our time machine Miku combo. 2k1. You know, it's an alright Climax, it used to be great back in the day, I feel like it sort of dropped um, in usage, definitely, like Bushiroad doesn't even print it for some sets, and at least in some colors. Um, and then we have four gold bar, and I did say that blind stock is sort of just not that great in compression building decks, but you gain so much advantage from having Climaxes in hand, that of course gold bar is sort of a necessary evil. Um, just being able to always have Climaxes to play to support your level 1 event. And the fact that it's on your level 3, like, you're forced to play this whether you like blind stalking or not. Gold Bar is an amazing trigger. Uh, I think it's one of the best in the game. So, yeah, I'm, you know, good thing we can play it. So that's it for the Miku deck profile. I hope you enjoyed. Um, it's just a super, super strong deck on paper. And I've started to, like, really, like, want to build it in real life. Um, because it just seems so powerful, seems so fun. And it can just be super, super toxic in the way it plays, just denying your opponent any damage, um, making it really hard for your opponent to win without the right cards in their deck. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you're looking for Vice Wars content, I do upload every other day. Um, be sure to like, subscribe. This was Top Tier Gaming by YouTube.